Well, these definitions are formal and there's a lot of symbolism and there's a lot of terminology. I apologize for that. Uh, we'll try to mitigate that as much as possible. So a lot of what's going to happen here is going to be symbols, writing, and a lot of discussion. We want to get you to sort of start to think about things in a slightly different way, but still using what you know of regarding your intuition, but not relying on your intuition. Because again, intuition will often lead you astray in mathematics. You have to trust the mathematics. Okay, so let's define a vector space. A vector space is a set of elements with two operations. Now I'm going to have different symbols for the operations. The symbols are going to be similar to what you've seen as far as addition and multiplication, but understand that these operations don't have to be addition and multiplication. They can be anything that I want them to be. Plus with a circle and a little dot with a circle. which satisfy the following properties. Okay, there are quite a few properties. I'm going to warn you. Okay, we'll start with number one. If U and V are in V, a uh, set of elements, uh, let's actually give it a name, a set of elements V, then U plus V is in V. Okay, this is called closure. So if I have a space and if I take two elements in that space, okay, oop, my little symbol, and if I, in this case, op let, that's fine, we can go ahead and call this addition and we can call this multiplication as long as we know that it might ne not necessarily mean addition and multiplication the way we're used to as far as the real numbers are concerned, that it could be any other thing. And again, we're just using language differently. That's all we're doing. So if U and V happen to be in V, then if I add them or if I perform this addition operation on those two elements, that I still end up back in my set. Do you remember what we did when we added two even numbers? If you add two even numbers, you end up with an even number. In other words, you come back to the set. But if you add two odd numbers, you don't end up back in the odd number set. You end up in the even number set. So the odd numbers don't satisfy the closure property. That means you can take two elements of them, add them, but you end up in a different set altogether. That's very odd. That's why we specify this property. Um, so if you take two elements of some space, vector space, then when you add them together, you stay in that vector space. You don't land someplace else. Okay. Uh, the others are things that you're familiar with. U plus V equals V plus U. This is the commutativity property. Oh, and by the way, um, I'm often not going to write this, these circles around it. I'll often just symbolize it like that and that. Again, they don't necessarily mean addition and multiplication. They're just symbols for some operation that I do to two elements. Okay. B, U plus V plus W equals U plus V plus W associativity. Okay, this is the associativity of the addition operation. Okay, C, there exists an element symbolized zero vector in V such that U plus zero, U plus that element, um, excuse me, is equal to zero plus that element, because of commutativity, is equal to u. This is just the additive identity. There is some element in this vector space that when I add it to any other vector in that vector space, I get back the vector, nothing changes.
Okay. And D. For each U in the vector space, for each vector in the vector space, there exists an element symbolized minus u such that u plus this minus u is equal to that zero vector element. This is called the additive inverse. 5 minus 5, 10 minus 10, radical 2 minus radical 2. This says that if I have a vector, if I pick any vector in a vector space, in order for it to actually satisfy the properties of a vector space, Somewhere in that vector space, there has to be another element, the opposite of which, that when I add those two together, I end up with a zero vector. That's what it's saying. Okay.